Folks, that's a promise of God in that song. Amen. We will rise. We will overcome death. Eternal, eternal life. Because of the cross of Calvary, we can have eternal life. We will rise. Wow. Good song, Sandy. Thank you so much this morning. If you got your Bibles, I'm going to ask you to turn with me over to the book of uh, Exodus this morning. We're going to be in chapter uh, 2 this morning. Uh, I want to highlight chapter uh, 1 and, and the first portion of chapter 2 and, and just a little bit of chapter 3. But we're going to focus uh, today uh, on God's plan. And, uh, and he definitely has one. There's no doubt uh, about that. And we're going to kind of take a look at that this morning as we see uh, a neutral time or a, a zone, if you will, of what, where Moses was before how God took care of him and how God had a plan for his future. And I believe it's a reference to each and every one of us today as we think about uh, our future and what God has in store uh, for each and every one of us. Uh, before, before I continue, I wanted to uh, also mention this morning that uh, uh, Miss Patty, want to keep you lifted up in prayer. She lost a dear, dear friend uh, this past week. Uh, and and, and she, uh, someone you knew from, from uh, way back, uh, many, many years. So uh, keep her lifted up. Her heart's heavy uh, with that. Uh, Tony, how's your back doing? I wanted to ask you about that this morning, too. Okay, amen. Folks, I, I, I say those things this morning because, you see, we don't, we don't understand everything that's going on and when it's going on and what's happening around sometimes. But there's a, there comes a time when we realize that as we stop and think about it, that God, God's on the throne. God is making some plans. Sometimes it's quiet. Sometimes it's kind of still. Sometimes it's not a, a, a loud voice that, that we hear as when Moses saw uh, uh, talk with the Lord at the a burning bush that we look at in chapter 3 here for a moment this morning. It, it's not a, an, an, a, 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 a big, big uh, you know, exclamation there of something happened, exclaiming something happened. But sometimes it's a quiet voice. It's just God working out a plan. And so I, I want us to look at that uh, here today uh, and, and how we put our trust today in God's plan. You ever trust anybody? Have put your trust in somebody? Yeah, y'all probably noticed I got a haircut. I went in and, and the, I said, yeah, I normally see this young lady down here that sits right here. I don't see her. Yeah, she's not here today. But we'll cut your hair. I said, okay. Who's going to cut it? That guy right back there in the corner. Folks, it's hard to trust just anybody with a pair of clippers, you know what I'm saying? But uh, sometimes we just have to trust people. We have to put our trust in them. And, uh, and, and I'll tell you, we, we try to put our trust in, in humanity. We try to put it in people. People will let you down, folks. But let me tell you something. If we'll just put our trust in God and in God's plans, we'll see that it'll be okay. In, in this text today, uh, we, we are in a, uh, a mid-zone or a, a middle uh, between two stories, if you will. Let, let me, uh, let's read this, and then we'll, 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 uh, we'll go back and take a look at both of these stories uh, just a little bit. But if you've got your Bibles there, Exodus chapter 2, would you stand with me? I want to pick up in verse 11. In verse 11, cha Exodus chapter 2. In verse 11, it, it's about the life of Moses here. It says, And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown, that he went out into uh, his brethren and looked upon their burdens, and he spied an Egyptian smiting a, sp smiting a Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way, and when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together, and he said uh, to him that did the wrong, Wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? And he said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as thou killest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. And when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian and sat down by a well. Now the priests of Midian had seven daughters, and they came, drew water, and filled the troughs to water their flock, father's flock. The shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. And when they came to Reol, their father, he said, How is it that you have uh, are come so soon today? And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. And he said unto his daughter, And where is he? Why is it that you have left the man? Call him that he may eat bread. And Moses was content to dwell with the man. And he gave to Moses Zipporah, his daughter. And she bare him a son. And he called his name Gershom. For he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. And it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. 
And the children of Israel sighed by reason of bondage, and they cried, and there came and their cry came unto God by reason of the bondage. And God heard their groaning. And God remembered his covenant with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel. And God had respect unto them. Heavenly Father, teach us today about your plan. Teach us today of your promise. Teach us today, Heavenly Father, that, of that trust that we must have in you. Guide us, strengthen us in our faith today. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. And you may be seated. We read a scripture today. It's usually in the middle of two other scriptures. One that you, uh, uh, the first one that you know of, and in probably to, were may, may possibly, or I hope you were, was taught as even a youngster. And that is the birth of Moses. Moses was set aside. There's no doubt about it. it Moses was, uh, was saved. There was a time when, when Pharaoh uh, charged all of his people uh, to uh, kill every son that is born to the uh, uh, Hebrew women. If y'all remember that, he even uh, commanded that the, uh, uh, that the midwives, that they would, they would kill the men, child, the boy children as they were born because he was afraid of the power that the Is, uh, Israelite children, the Hebrew children, were, were, um, were having. Because of their ex uh, growth, their power, they were getting huge in size. They were uh, there to uh, serve uh, Pharaoh and, and Egypt to build and, and and they were, they were, uh, in, uh, you know, they were under their rule. But at the same time, we see a young baby that was born named Moses. God had a plan. There was a plan. God would use him for a, 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 a walk. God would use him as a servant. God would bring this young child up, even though he was brought up in, a, in Egypt under palace training to be an Egyptian. He would still... God would make a way for this child to be protected. If y'all remember the rest of that story uh, of, the, of these two that I'm talking about, Pharaoh's daughter uh, 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 said to, let's take him back. Find one of these Hebrew women to take care of him. Who was there? His own mother. She took care of him. What did she do? Oh, she knew that he would be under palace training of the Egyptians, but she also knew by raising her child in Egypt, a Hebrew boy, she would be able to teach him the Hebrew ways and to know God and God's plan for him. So we see the first phase of, of two stories. If we jump over to chapter 3, you would recognize what God did there. It is the, it is the uh, uh, chapter 3 is about the burning bush. Y'all remember that he was at uh, the mountain of God, uh, Horeb, and God sent an angel there. And there we see the fire that burned in that midst of that bush. It was also there in that uh, fourth, uh, third chapter, uh, verse 4. It says, And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see God, he called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. I want you to put yourself there just for a moment this morning. Put yourself just there for more this morning, just for a moment. We see a, a life. We see it, it broke down this morning in three elements, in three phases, if you will. Folks, I, I'm telling you something that happens in our own lives. We start out as children. We go, we're born, we, we're raised, and we're taught. We go to school, we grow, we, we get out. We, uh, marriage may be in, in, inside, uh, uh, growing up and getting older. Then there's our own children. There's a second phase between there. Oh, listen, we, 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 buy that, we buy that car that we can't afford and got a mortgage that we can't afford. Y'all know what phase I'm talking about. And we work through that. And then we work into a third phase here. Listen, and that third phase, sometimes we throw our hands up and we say, oh, we can't be used. We've, we're past the time of, of using phase one and phase two. Now it's time for someone else. Folks, let me tell you something about phase three in your life. It's the best time to serve God. It truly is. There's a lot of things that we can put to our past, and we can focus more on God's plan. I want you to see in between these two, we know the burning bush. It would be there that the Lord would call on Moses in this verse, and Moses would recognize, very important here today, Moses would recognize the voice of God. He said, here am I, here am I. He recognized who was calling him out of that burning bush. So what was going on then in the scripture we read? 
What's going on with Moses at this period of time? We're in between two phases of life here of what God has in store, a perfect plan. Let me make sure you understand something about trusting in God's perfect plan. God does not change his plan daily. He doesn't send no amendments to this book. Anybody receive one in the mail? There's an amendment to this book. No, there's no amendments. Folks, he meant it when he said it, and he still means it today. Amen? And so we read God's word and his direction for our lives, and we realize that God's got a perfect plan. We get a picture sometime of, of what is God doing. It, things is kind of, uh, uh, we, we don't see God showing up like, we think he should show up. Key word is what we think sometimes. Folks, it's not about what we think. It's about what God knows. Amen? And God's plan is a perfect plan. And we need to put our trust in that plan. God, God is not, listen closely, God is not in heaven, cocked back, rigged back in some kind of a, a big, nice recliner, thinking, well, I think I'll let her run by herself for a few days. Folks, that's not God's plan. That's not God's way. You see, Jer uh, the book of uh, Jeremiah in the 29th chapter, and it's a verse that you probably know in the 11th verse. It said, I, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. He says, I've got thoughts of peace, not of evil, and give you to give you an expected end. Folks, God is in heaven. There's no doubt about it. Folks, God is watching over you. God's got a perfect plan for all of our lives today. And he knows what that plan, and he wants to show it to you. Where was Moses during this time? Moses had left Egypt. Moses had to escape Egypt. Moses hadn't done right, but Moses got away. Moses then was, was protected. Moses went and found a safe haven. Moses, at this point in time in his life, was, was going through a, a phase where he would eventually be used in chapter 3 as the one that would lead the Hebrew children out of captivity that they were in in Egypt. It would be Moses that would have the challenge uh, 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 placed upon him to go. He would have to learn to trust in God more than he'd ever learned to trust in God. Amen. We know the story there in the chapter 3 as Moses was sent. Oh, he come up with a lot of excuses, you see. He came up with all kind of reason why he couldn't do what, he, uh, what God was asking him to do. First he came up and said, you know, I don't talk very well. Y'all know the story. But he's, Mo, the Lord said, Aaron's on the way. So what does it tell us about this time period in, in between chapter, uh, 11th verse uh, here and the first verse of chapter 3? It tells us that God is on the throne doing what God does best, folks. And that is making the plans, the preparations for each and every one of our lives. Oh, it was very important, I believe, that Moses had received that palace training in Egypt. It would be an asset that he had as he would go back to face Pharaoh. It would be an asset that he had to know the uh, Egyptian ways so that he, could, uh, he would know how to react and what to do. There was things that he had seen done that he knew he would be able to help with, but he would have to put his trust in the Lord. He first told the Lord no. Anybody here ever done that? Don't raise your hand. Anybody ever told the Lord no, I, I can't do that? Folks, but he used you anyway. Praise God. Amen. Oh, I just heard a testimony uh, just this past week on one of the uh, 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 Christian channels there. And, and it, was a, it was a man giving his testimony, a pastor giving his testimony uh, out of Texas out there. And what he said was, I told God no. And I told God no. And I told God finally, I told God, no, Lord, why I'm saying no is you don't understand me. Folks, let me say this. Exactly what he said. He said, I found that God did understand me. Folks, God can get our attention to do anything he wants us to do. Amen? Are we willing? Are we ready? Will we be uh, 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 trustworthy to trusting in, put our trust in him and be that one that God can use today? M Moses was at a place in his life. You realize what all took place with Moses? What he realized was, was pain and hurt to, to an Israelite, to a Hebrew brother that, had, that was, uh, was being beaten. He was starting to recognize in his life that he was growing up. In, in that first verse, it said it came to pass in those days when Moses uh, was grown. Moses had grown up in, in this, uh, in this uh, palace training. But Moses was realizing that it was time to do something different. 
It was time to move the way God would have him to move. And God would show him that way. Moses uh, met a family there. Moses married. Moses had children. Moses' life was in phase two. He was moving forward. Folks, he, had, he was a shepherd. He was uh, uh, watering it. He was at, the Mount, at Mount Horeb. He was there. And he was doing what God had in store for him. How do we know that? Because God called on him. You see, but there was one thing that he would have to do during this time. He would have to understand that he was in training as well. In training, and that is to trust fully in God. Trust is a very difficult thing when we use the word trust. And let me, let me express it this way because that's what we're asking the plan of God to do. It's tr- just like I went to that barber, boy, I had trust in that boy. I didn't know if he cut hair or not, you know. Uh, so we, we put our trust in the hardest thing. Think about this, ter- seriously. Uh, to trust someone else, uh, you, you've got to relinquish the trust that you have in your own self. Anybody here, and I wanted to ask this, uh, uh, anybody ever skydive? Anybody here jump out of, you, what? You okay? All right. All right. Listen, let me tell you what she had to do to skydive. Folks, she jumped out of an airplane. Did you pack your own, um, uh, what's that thing called, uh, a parachute? They did. They did? They did? Uh-oh. Folks, you know, it's kind of uh, 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 difficult to know that you're jumping out of an airplane. And somebody else has packed that chute. What did you just do? You put your trust in that chute packer. I hope he didn't get the cord in the wrong spot. We had to to relinquish trust. It can be very difficult. But there's things in life that we must do to do that. You couldn't pack your own parachute. But someone had to do that. But you had to put your trust in that one that did that. I went to one of those... uh, uh, teamwork workshops. Now, some of y'all have probably been to one of those over time in your company and your business. We, we formed a, it was a group that went and, it, and this team, it was a team effort thing where you had to put your trust in someone. And, and, and we went as a, I was in automobile business and the owner of the company was, was in our group and he was, and he was brought out first to be, uh, show that trust. Y'all have seen it, probably if you haven't been a part of one, you've seen it on TV. He had to put a blindfold on, the owner of my company, put a blindfold on, climb up a ladder that was leaning against a pine tree, 10 feet in the air, and he had to fold his arms, and he just fall off of that ladder backwards. There was nine more there, because it was a group of 10. It was the management staff of that company, and our job was to catch him. Ooh, did we catch him? Yeah, we caught him. Matter of fact, we talked about it. There weren't a chance him being the owner of the company to drop him. But listen, it takes trust to crawl up that ladder. He didn't know what he was going to do. They blindfolded him and helped him climb up the ladder. Didn't tell him he was going to have to fall off of it backwards. But we had to learn to cradle our arms in a certain way. And we, as we had to break his fall. And man, we just lowered him right down and his feet hit the ground. But he put his trust in us. He had to do something, and that was relinquish the trust he had in himself and give it to us. You see, Moses is in a situation here, and God's growing him. Moses is in phase two of his life. He has been born. He's been born for a special reason, folks. He was saved in that uh, Nile River, in that floating uh, uh, device that had been made. A, huh? A basket, floating basket. He had been saved in that basket. He had been found by Pharaoh's daughter. The mother of Pharaoh was handily available. She was welcomed with her own child to bring this child and save him. God's got a plan. God's got a plan that, that has to be trusted in. The mother had to be overwhelmed. Oh my, the child had to put it. It said, matter of fact, in chapter 2, that uh, she could no longer, uh, yeah, uh, chapter 2, verse 3, right ahead of where it was. It says that when she could no longer hide him, she took him uh, an ark of brushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. She made it so that he'd be found. God speaking. 
God's perfect plan is unfolding, right? With the mom, with Pharaoh's daughter, Egypt, the kingdom there, the palace training that he would get, but yet he would grow up to know the Hebrew ways. So we see that plan as it come to pass, you know, and we think about the test of time. Now he's in phase two of his life. Here he is, a, a man that it said here, it came those days that Moses was grown. Moses was growing up. Moses was seeing things, understanding things, but God had a plan for him. God had a pro, uh, was going through a process and a time. No, he wasn't in his favorite recliner in heaven doing nothing. God was preparing Moses for phase two of his life and phase into phase two and phase through phase three. It, the problem is that for many of us, the lessons that life, I believe, has planned for us, it leads us to the conclusion that the only one we can trust is ourselves. However, when you think about all those, uh, I would call them carnal conclusions, uh, nothing could be further from the truth because I'm going to say it like this, the Lord is the only one that we can truly trust, Lord. The Lord himself above anyone else, above ourselves. The problem is that true trust, I believe, it often comes uh, when we have to put ourselves aside and say, Lord, show me. Hard words to say sometimes, church. Hard words to say that we want to put all of our trust in God. Lord, we know that you have a plan, and he does. Let me give you some assurance today uh, of, of God. He's got a plan. Folks, there's not one seated in this auditorium here right now that God doesn't have a plan for. Will you tap into it? Will you, have, will you put yourself in a position that you want to you wanna take that genuine test of trust and say, Lord, I know that you've got a plan for me, and I know that I can trust in you. Oh, the perfect plan, God's perfect plan, God's trustworthy plan. Moses did not in any way forget his lineage that his mother had taught him uh, of, of his uh, uh, Hebrew ways and his beliefs. We, I believe fully that, that Moses knew that this was God, just as he did in verse 4 he, of chapter 3. He knew, and I'll read it again in chapter uh, 3, verse 4. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. Have you done that, church? Have you put your trust in God and to the, to the point where you hear his voice? Oh, sometimes it is loud. Sometimes it's a loud voice where he, not listen, I don't think God gets loud because he just feels like he wants to be loud today. I think God gets loud sometimes because we need to hear him and we need to hear him now. There's sometimes I believe that he just puts his arm around us. I think there's times when he just comforts in a special way. I, I answered to the call to be a pastor years and years ago. And then there was something going on. I, I had met with different people in some places and some ways and some conferences and some meetings that I would ne normally never be in contact with. There was no reason for me to know them or talk with them or really, just, just weren't. But they seemed to find me. And every one of them said the same thing. Boy, do we need some pastors. We need some pastors. We need someone to stand in that gap for Jesus Christ. One Sunday morning, church, I came and knelt at an altar right here, just like this one. I knelt at an altar, and I said, Lord, with everything going on and all of these things happening around about people telling me we need pastors, and I, I, would, I had spoke as a, uh, you know, filling in, and I'd done some banquets and some other things. All these things about churches and they needing pastors. I, I knelt down at that altar and I said, just tell me what you got on your mind. Folks, when you get honest with God and trust in him, he will speak to you, folks. I felt someone like they had touched my shoulder. I'll never forget the feeling of this. I was down on my knees and I felt like someone had came and put their arm on my shoulder. And I looked to see if it was my wife, who oftentimes we prayed together at the altar. And I looked, and there was no one visible. Y'all catch the word? Folks, spiritually, it was everything. It was God. 
And he said, when you get up from there, let's get busy. You've got the message. I've sent it four or five times. You're a little slow, but I've sent it four or five times. Get up and get busy. And that was the message. Have you heard from him lately? Have, have, you, have you got serious with God? Have you asked him to, to, to move in your life? Lord, I want to trust in you. Lord, I, I, I want to move to, phase, to the next phase. What is that phase? I know this part of my life's here. I know what part of life I am in at this point, And now I'm ready to move again. What is it that you would have me to do? What is it, Heavenly Father, that you need me to do? What could I be an asset to, to the spiritual life that I want to live a Christian? How could I express myself in such a way that, that, I am, uh, uh, that, that you are just filling my cup, my heart's overflowing, that I could be that servant that you would have me to be? Have you got serious with God lately? I pre-warn you, my friends, if you'll get serious with God, He will answer you you see he tells us and solomon's a good one to teach us that understanding we look back at scripture sometime and he's he's kind of directed our senses to our uh to the to the faith that we have in god and he tells us ignore sometimes what we can see understand and trust in the lord folks sometimes we don't see it we don't see it visibly but our senses tell us that god is close and he's got a message that he wants us to hear. Oh, it was Solomon that would say, trust the Lord uh, uh, beyond uh, all those things in spite of your own understanding. See the big picture, you see. Oh, I believe sometimes we have to ignore things like balance sheets. I think we have to ignore things like uh, doctors and lawyers and, and, and what the economy declares. And I believe we need to just close our eyes and let God move. Amen. Sometimes, folks, we need to do what that boss man of mine had to do, and that was shut his eyes, fall backwards into what we can't see sometimes. That's putting your trust in God. That's putting your trust in the full plan of God. You see, we put our, and if we do this, and if we had time to go into chapter 3, but I hope you know the story uh, as it continues on, and go this afternoon and read this because it, it'll impact your life on what we're saying here today. But we can't put our trust in our old abilities. We see Moses here trying to put his trust. Can you see him analyzing the situation? Moses began immediately to analyze the situation. What I can do and what I can't do. And God was saying to him, what do you think I've been doing in phase two of your life? Do you hear it? Do you hear God speaking to him? What do you think, Moses, I've been doing? I know where you were in phase one. I took you from here to here. What do you think I've been doing in phase two of your life? What phase of life are you in today? Phase two? Phase three here today? What would God, what is God saying to you today? Listen, I believe it's time that we have good understanding of what God wants us to know. Put our trust in him and let him speak to us. Don't put your trust in our own abilities. Moses immediately began to tell the Lord why he couldn't do what God wanted him to do but there was a promise there was a promise in the in the last two verses that we read here today there was something that stands out today that I want you to understand about your God today in verse 24 and 25 it said here and God heard the groaning of his people and God remembered his covenant that he had made that covenant is a promise he made it Abraham. He made it, made it to Isaac. He made it to Jacob. And God looked upon the children, verse 25 of Israel, and God had respect unto them. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, it declares that we need to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts. Do not lean on our own understanding. One of the first verses I read here today came out of Jeremiah 29 and 11. It says, for I know the thoughts, this is God speaking, that I think toward you. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. I don't know if you have noticed it or not. You will as you get older. 
Time's really going by fast. I can remember when a minute was 60 seconds. Y'all remember that? It's about 30 now, isn't it? <laughs> it's speeded up somewhere down the line. And now they've really thrown a, 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 a wrench in this Why? by changing uh, times in spring and, and fall and all kinds. But listen, time is flying. It's fleeting. And we've got some opportunities. And I just ask you today, what, what phase of life are you in? God knows where you were. He knows where you're at. And folks, he knows where you will be. All three phases are right in front of each and every one of us. What will you do with it? Will we move forward? Will we put our trust in God's perfect plan? Because folks, he's got one. God's got one. Never worry about what God is doing. I'll tell you what. He says he's watching over you. He loves his children. He wants you to do good. Phase one to phase two, God just wants you to accelerate. Phase two to phase three, oh, don't give up on God. Don't bail out. Listen, now's the time. It says the younger should learn from the older. We've got the experience. Folks, we, we've lived through, through some things. I'm not going to stand up and say they, they listen very good, but we, it's our job to tell, amen, to teach. The elders of the church, leaders, we should be willing to teach. What do we have to do to do that? Sometimes, folks, we have to just trust in the Lord God. He's got a plan. What's his plan for you today? Can you crawl up that ladder, fold your arms, and fall backwards and let him take care of you? Can you do it? We must tr trust in him today. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Heavenly Father, what a God you are. Lord, you're not slack in what you do. Lord, we're the ones that let you down. I pray today, Heavenly Father, that you would help us to examine our own lives. To know there's a perfect plan that you have for us. And yeah, when we're in these phases of growth, just like Moses was, before you delivered him to that next phase of his life, help us to, oh, to grow spiritually. Help us to be faithful to you. Help us to lean on you, Heavenly Father. Help us to put our trust in that perfect plan that you have. Thank you for being our God today. Thank you for speaking to us, O oh Lord. Just as you called out to Moses, Heavenly Father, I know that you're calling out to us this very at this very hour. Help us to respond to your message, to your word. Help us to respond to that call, Heavenly Father. Help us be strong to be strong in, in our walk with you, Heavenly Father. Help us to seek that understanding. Lord, help us to relinquish all that trusting only in ourselves. Oh, and trust solely on you. Dear Heavenly Father, if there be one here today that knows you not as their Lord and Savior, I pray that today is the day of salvation. I know, Heavenly Father, for you to guide that life into the next phase of their life. Oh, Heavenly Father, they must be uh, a, a child of God. Oh, Heavenly Father, if you are calling on them, I pray that they're opening their hearts, their minds right now to be receptive of that call, hearing you say their names, just as you call Moses, Moses. May they hear the voice of God, the voice of you, Lord, as you call them into salvation, Lord. Oh, may they respond today. If there be one here that knows you not as Lord and Savior, I pray today would be the day of salvation. Maybe we're here today, Heavenly Father, and we're, we're just thinking, you know, I know God. He's tried to call me. He wants to deliver me into the next phase of my life. I have made him some promises, and he, I have let him down. Maybe it's time, oh church, that we, uh, oh Lord, that the church comes to the realization that we have let you down. Lord, oh, you have protected us. You have healed us. Oh, Heavenly Father, we have cried tears. Oh, uh, asking you to come and, and, and step in that gap and, and take care of us. A heal to heal our families, our family members. Lord, you have, you, have, uh, you have been there. We asked you and you did. Now it's time, Heavenly Father, for us to remember the promise that we have made to you that we will serve you. We'll be closer to you than ever before, Heavenly Father. So today for salvation, rededication, refresh those, those promises that we have made to you of what we will do. And Heavenly Father, maybe if there be one here that's looking for a church home, I pray that they would find 
First, First Black Creek Baptist Church, a place that they can worship. For salvation, rededication, church membership, we turn this time of invitation now over to you. For your name we pray. Amen.